All right, it's DJ Gatsby, the DJ Gatsby Show. We're back uh, with my guest, Sean Hudson, author of Death of the Stereotype. Now, Sean, earlier uh, in the interview, we talked about how you started writing and the uh, meaning behind some of your poetry. Um, what made you uh, decide to be so provocative with your poems? I mean, there's some very powerful topics here that you got. Respectability, the, a black woman's pain, um, you know, the Bronx story, Fin the Foe, Sins of My Father, some very, very you know, serious titles for the poetry. Uh, what made you tackle these subjects uh, in, in your book? I just felt like um, a lot of authors, they might have tackled it, like in their own way, but I feel like I wanted to do it my way, you know, because there's, you got a lot of poets that are great, sure. you know, but a lot of them sound like a Harvard professor and use like a, a lot of words out of a thesaurus and it's like all right what am i reading here like yeah. and me i'm just straightforward letting you know how i feel and i feel like i don't know like really i just wanted to um just tackle something different because everything else i write usually everything i write is about social issues and even though some of those poems are it's more personal to me because i had a lot of stuff that i held back on in previous releases and I felt like this was, I felt comfortable just sharing it with the world. Now a lot of poem, a lot of poets or spoken word artists, um, they're very reluctant mm -hmm. to publish their work. You know, I know tons of poets, they'll, they, you know, they, they got pages and pages of poetry or even spoken word artists. Um, what motivates you to actually publish your poems? I think the the fact that it might could save someone's life, you know, just sometimes your words, you speaking on your um, experiences or some of the trials and tribulations that you've been through and the things that you've seen, it might help somebody else that might be in a similar situation and they see that you're going through it too, they might feel like, you know what, I'm not alone, you know, so I figured, you know, what's the point in spending hours, days, months, years in writing something and I'm just going to put it away and never share it with anybody. You know, if I wanted to do that, I would just have a journal, you know, but this, this is my gift from God, so I'm going to just share it with everybody and whatever happens, happens after that. Now, off camera, you were talking to someone, you know, asking you about open mics and, um, and things of that nature. Do you perform uh, your poetry at open mics or, or at, at poetry events? Like, sometimes I've, I've done that a lot more in the past, but I had took a while, I had took a, like a, um, a hiatus, sort of, you know, because I had a death in the family and I wasn't even sure I was even going to continue writing. So mm -hmm. what I did recently was I shot a few videos for some poems and I would have like an instrumental in the background. Okay. You know, to try to show everybody, to try to show everybody what I'm capable of, and to make up for the performances all the times I didn't perform. So you know, but I'm pretty soon I'm gonna get back into the open mic field of things. All right now, you, uh, how do your family and friends, um, you know, how how does your poetry affect them? You, whenever you have poetry and spoken word or something, you're gonna share it with somebody. I'm gonna spit some verses to somebody. You know, what do your family, friends, and coworkers feel about your poetry and you being a poet? Um, a lot of them, they they're very supportive of it. They love it. You know, my mom. Shout out to her. Okay. You know, she um. Every time she reads, every time I publish a book, she's like, "Oh, I can't wait to read this." And you know, she started reading this poem, this book. And I speak about, you know, some of the experiences and things I've witnessed go on with her. And I thought, oh man, she's going to be upset. She's going to be pissed. But it turned out to be the opposite because she knows that what went on with her was a part of my journey in growing into a man. So, you know, everybody's pretty much supportive of it so far. Okay. Now in the book, you, I'm looking here, you have two sections. One is poems, and one is poetic thoughts. What is the difference uh, between the two? 
the two. Uh, well, what the poems is just strictly the poems and what poetic thoughts is like me taking certain poems that I feel are really special and I just give you like a breakdown of what was my process of writing them and what made me write them. You know, because a lot of times I wish some of my favorite authors or poets, if they did an interview, you know, they would talk about the behind the scenes and sure. what made them write this or what was they thinking when they wrote it. And that's what I wanted to do for my readers. I wanted to give you that insight, you know, in case I don't do an interview, you know. I just wanted to give you my thought process and what motivated me to write it and what influenced me. Okay, well listen, we're about ready to wrap the interview up, man. I know you're going to be attending the Literary Mixer here at home at the Dwight Cultural Arts Center on the 29th. Yeah. Uh, what can, you know, are you excited about this? Yeah. What are you looking forward to accomplishing? What are you looking forward to at that event? I'm pretty much just, I'm just looking to, you know, network with people. Sure. I love being at home, yeah. you know, so just looking to have a good time and just, you know, not just to sell books, but just to get a feel for being out there in the literary field again and being a part of a bigger community, you know? So that's what I'm really looking forward to. Right now, I'm looking at the last chapter in the book. You have a preview from your 2019 release uh, entitled Just Us. Tell us a bit about that book and what can your readers look forward to uh, when, that's, when that's published. Mm. Uh, Just Us, that's going to be my return into what a lot of publishers call urban fiction. Street okay. fiction, however you want to call it. It's pretty much going to be a story where you have, you know, a woman who is pretty much, she's an internal affairs investigator and she's dealing with a case regarding a shooting of an unarmed black man. And there's a police department, it's a fictional town mm -hmm. called Sinville, and she's pretty much going to have to deal with them. But they're going to, they're not going to go easy at her. And her husband is also going to have to come with grip. her boyfriend, better yet, is going to have to come with grips of some of his demons. And he's going to have to overcome a certain tragedy that goes on. And I can't tell you really too much okay. anymore because it's going to be a crazy plot and a roller coaster ride. But people can expect something really unique and very modern and everything to deal with, you know, the issues we're going on in our times. And it should be out early June. Okay. So look out for that. All right, everybody, it's DJ Gasson. We're here with the uh, poet and author Sean Hudson. Uh, we've been discussing this book, That's a Serial Type. Uh, Sean, we're going to wrap it up in a minute. You said you were going to read one of your poems before we go. Yeah. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back uh, with Sean Hudson, author of Death of the Stereotype. <laughs>